for it. Just sit down, please, for a moment. I'm so privileged and so happy to be here this morning. Unexpectedly, just came out for some quick business and I uh, was intending just to come in, go out as quick as I could. And, uh, but somehow uh, we had to keep contact with Pastor, Pastor Fortune. Uh, as I was visiting that family that I last uh, had to go over to him and uh, I put up there at their home and so obviously I had to have the obligation to tell them that hey, we men of God, I'm here. So last time I, I, I evaded preaching, I, I, I almost tried to turn him down, but mm. this time there was no ways. Amen. Amen. So I'm so thankful to be standing before you. And obviously, whatever I'm going to preach to you, you can rest assured it's uh, unpremeditated, okay? Mm. Don't think that I planned on you or anything, but just this is just completely out of the blue. Amen. I'm so thankful to be here to see all of you here and see the great work that is taking place here. Amen. There's a great work I can see. Uh, Pastor Fosh, you are doing a good job. And many times it takes also, you know, pastors, you know, to appreciate and see what other pastors are doing. And, you know, they, they also need these compliments, these this 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 pat on the back, you know. Amen. It, it is always so nice because he's really doing quite a good work. Amen. Amen. And that family uh, that I handed over, Jackson and his wife, they are here this morning. We are so thankful. I heard that uh, through the sterling work of Pastor Fortune and the deacons that they really uh, progressing well. And that little. Not no longer a little, but a big Jonathan has been baptized. Amen. 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 We really appreciate God for that. Amen. And I hear most of their relatives are also now coming to church with them. And also another church where they were going, uh, they are just being such an influence, bringing them all in. And I'm sure, you know, wherever they are coming from there, the people are not pleased because they're almost emptying the church and bringing it right here. We really appreciate God for that. Amen. All just shows that the man of God is doing a wonderful work. Amen. Let's just clap some hands for him. Amen. 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 Now, uh, it's always such a treacherous thing and very difficult for visiting pastors sometimes to know what to preach because uh, you know, you don't want to interrupt, you don't want to, you want to compliment what the preacher has been preaching here. Amen. But obviously, um, when we come, you know, we're coming from our churches, we have been following some certain inspiration, we've been preaching a certain way. Sometimes it, it, it's, it's not always the same as what is here, but sometimes, uh, you know, it's, it blends in here and there. And I'll tell you from the beginning, uh, before I preach, that um, I was here, I think, uh, December, the last part of December, and uh, the uh, half of January, and I've been having a friend of mine who was coming from the UK, he was preaching over in Soweto, and um, we had some meetings together we there, and I was now sharing with him, and he was saying, Pastor David, what I... What are you going to start this year with? What sort of, sort of inspiration? You know, and, and then I said, you know, for me, I think this year being 2023, I think I'll just take something from Psalm 23. Mm. Amen. 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 Being that it's that's 23, mm. you know. Amen. Nothing superstitious, nothing, you know, superfluous, nothing scientific, but just the math mathematics that it is the year 2023, I just felt, hey, let's just take 23 of uh, Psalm. And I tell you, friends, what we, 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 we have been preaching since January on that, and the things that the Lord has revealed to us is just outstanding. Amen. We've got so many things. And I'm now, this morning, trying to kind of lump all those things together in one sermon. Amen. Amen. So, you guessed right. What we want to speak of this morning is on Psalm 23. Amen. 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 You'll be praying with me. 
Okay? Amen. God richly bless you. So if we just stand up to our feet, we'll just open that Psalm 23. And I bring you also greetings from my church. And uh, uh, I just say, whoever you meet there, wherever you're going, just greet them. So Psalm 23, it's uh, six verses. But I tell you, that's a powerful Amen. psalm right there. We'll just read together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. I'd like you to read the second verse, and then I read the third. So can you just read the second verse, please? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet, though I walk into the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Shall we just pray? If you've got a request, just raise up your hands and uh, we just present ourselves to God. Merciful and true God, here we are. Yes, Lord. Heavenly God, the sheep of your pasture. Amen. We are a needed people, every one of us, Lord. And uh, we are living in these troublous times where we realize, Heavenly Father, we are completely unable, but we totally depend on you. For you are the way, the truth. You are the leadership. You are the shepherd. And we would pray that we be in condition to be led this year, Lord, as we realize, Heavenly Father, that the times have been treacherous. we got to be led closed, follow closed. Help us, God, to be influenced by the message, influenced by your presence, influenced by your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for this church. Thank you for Pastor Fortune, the great work he is doing here, God. I'm sure you see all the efforts and all the men that stand with him, the officers. May you bless them, dear God. We pray, committing their efforts in your hands, and ask that as I come here to compliment what all the men of God is doing, Lord, may we just be a blessing together today. That is the end of the service. We would say it was all complimentary. Heavenly Father, heal the sick among us. Get glory to yourself. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pray, Lord. Just take your seats. Amen. So, uh, yeah, we want to speak on uh, a few minutes, a few hours, whatever, on this subject here. The Lord be my shepherd. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. The Lord be my shepherd. Amen. Amen. We, as I said, we are living in those times when friends everywhere you can see this is the fulfillment of the hour you know you hear the, the saber rattling putins and the world war is just almost upon us and the tragedies and things that are taking place you can see we are just that close Amen. so close that we we need to be led you know this is not a time now that you you start to make some wild Guesses and things. Amen. We need now that the hand of God lead us very, very Amen. close. Amen. Because you may make the last mistake, mm. and that will be the last, and then the rapture takes place. Yes. Anytime, friends, you can see, we feel it. Amen. Somehow we cannot touch something else, but you can, if you're a Christian in your spirit, you feel there's something just about to happen. Amen. 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 That's why we embarked on, uh, on, on this subject here, the Lord being my shepherd. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. So may this year 23 here, may the Lord be your shepherd. Amen. Amen. Be led, be guided. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 I just want to start with a scripture here uh, from uh, Romans chapter 8, which says, Romans chapter 8, from verse 14. Romans chapter 8, just part of this thing, it says, uh, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, Amen. they are the sons of Amen. God. Amen. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may not know nothing about this message, brother, mm. but uh, like the prophet speaks about Anania and... and, and uh, but not to the name of Sapphira, but uh, Simeon, sorry, and yeah. Anna. Yeah. Amen. The prophet says they were blind. Amen. Amen. But those are some of the very first people that knew that Messiah was on earth. Yes. Amen. 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 And they were led, being blind, but they were guided to know that the Messiah was here. Mm -hmm. And the prophet says, this is the, the, the finality of being led by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may not be intelligent, you may not be the wisest, you may not just be the most learned, but if you are led by the Spirit, you will never go wrong. Amen. That's why we're talking, Lord, shepherd me. Amen. Let me be led, oh God. Amen. And you know, it takes faith to be led. Amen. It really takes faith to be led because it, 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 it takes you uh, saying that you know nothing Amen. to be led. Yes, sir. And the prophet says, why? Does God sort of liken us to sheep? Mm. Because he says, sheep are led. Amen. They don't depend on intellect. Amen. They are completely just hopeless little creatures. Mm. He says, when a sheep is lost, it's completely lost. Mm. It does not find its way out at all. Mm. And he says, that is why we must be like yes. sheep. Yes. But many times, brethren, you will find what actually stands against our being led is our thoughts, our intellects, yeah. amen. Our minds, mm. they are too big sometimes. Yeah. In a message called uh, 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 Perfect Strength by Perfect Weakness, yeah. Brother Branham says many times we are too strong, yeah. we are too intellectual, yeah. we are too wise yeah. for God to lead us. Yeah. But brother, we are coming to a place where you now must say, I've known nothing, yeah. I want to be led. Is that your prayer this morning? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. This year of 2023, brother, be led, be shepherded in your family. This year, in your business, be shepherded. Amen. In all your plans, may God shepherd you. Shepherd you in your marriage. Shepherd you in your health, in your troubles. Praise the Lord. Even in your words and whatever you want to do, may you be led, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 And the prophet says, uh, you know, Jesus Christ himself being the Son of God, John chapter 5, he said, I do not know what to say, I do not know what to preach, I do not know what to say, but I'm depending on the Father. Yes. Praise the Lord. And in a message called the Lamb and the Dove, yes. where he was preaching about the church in its condition, he says, brethren, that's the kind of condition the church must be in before the rapture. Amen. There must be now a condition existing between us and God. Amen. Like Jesus Christ was led by God. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ was led by God. Everything he spoke, everything he preached about, Amen. he was led. There's so many of us many times we think we know now the message and we, we don't need anyone to tell us anymore about this and that. But brother, that's where many times the older you are in the message, sometimes the more dangerous it becomes. Sometimes I really enjoy those new people that are coming to the faith. They don't know nothing. And you find when you don't know anything, those first years when you are coming to the message, you make good progress. Do you know why? Because you're not using your intellect box. I mean, you're not too powerful. You don't know nothing about the politics in the church. 
Amen. But when you get older and you begin to know the politics in the church, or who dresses like this, who goes with this, and who goes with this, and you know all those things, amen. That's where you begin to find problems coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you wish you don't know nothing of what's going on in the church. But brother, sister, when God keeps your mind open, many times I say, Peter, when he saw Jesus Christ walking on the water, you know, the prophet says, uh, he, he, he walked unconsciously. When he asked Jesus, shall I also come on the water? Shall I also walk? Jesus Christ said, come. Do you know you can do it? You can do it. You can do all things are possible to them that believe. Them that believe, those that are led of God, all things are possible. There is nothing on this earth that you cannot do. Oh, praise God now, brother and sister. Let's talk about these things. All things are possible to you. All things are possible to everyone in this room. You can change your life. You can change everything of the course of life that you are going through. Praise the Lord. But what stands in the way is our intellect. When Peter actually took the word of God, and the prophet says, take God at his word. Take God at his word. When God just says something, believe it without reasoning it and thinking it out. But brother, let me tell you, that's the most difficult thing to do. Not to reason. Yeah. Not to be a grown-up person. Pretend to be like a baby. Yes, no nothing. Yeah. That's the greatest battle we have. Yeah. Is the battle of the mind. Yeah. Human battles, mind battles, yeah. is what drowned us like Peter. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, Peter started to walk on the water. And you know what? When he thought nothing about walking on the water, he walked. Do you understand that, brother? Amen. Brother Branham says, reasoning is always the enemy of faith. Hallelujah. And when Peter began to reason, he kind of looked around and said, me, water, and I am walking on it. Then the scientific principles mm. of gravity came to his mind. Yes, he came to him. Yes. That's what we are trying to tell you. Don't reason. Don't think. Hey, can you imagine? That's not easy, eh? It's not easy to reason. Not to reason. It's very difficult to imagine you know nothing. But that's our battle, brother, sister. Yes. The Bible says, when Peter began now to reason about the scientific theories and everything, he began to think, how can I, me, standing on water? Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible. And when he reasoned, yeah. the fear came upon him. Yeah. Yeah. Then he sank. Yeah. That's how we are thinking, my brother and sister. Yeah. That you can see is how we must be led. Yeah. And as long as we are led and we take God at his yeah. way, Like that, he always does that, brother, sister. Amen. 
like the children of Israel yes. when they came out to the Red Sea. Come on, brother, sister. The Egyptians behind them, the mountains on the side, the Red Sea ahead of them. Have you ever come to that kind of a tight spot? That's what God always does to his children. He comes and makes you come to a tight spot where you don't know how am I going to find the last run? How am I going to survive? How am I going to come out of this situation? When you don't know how, that's when the supernatural will come. When you don't know how to do it, right? I'll come on and have church here, brother and sister. Come on, brother, let's cast down our reasonings, brother. Let's learn to cast down. Let's learn to be led. Let's learn to say, God, you are right and I am wrong. And words will be a lie, but God's will be the truth. Amen. And when they were in that kind of tight spot, like you are going to be in those kind of tight spots, that's when the paradox happens. That's when the third proof takes place. Read all the Lord the Bible, brother. It's when a believer has come to the end of his wits. When you don't know which way next, you don't know what to do. And that's the most interesting part of a believer's work. That's how God just tries to, you know, put his children in there. He enjoys to do that. Ah, oh, come on, am I preaching to somebody this morning? Who oh, is in that kind of a situation? Am I talking to somebody in that kind of a condition? Come in there, bro. But when you go no more plants are lost, you don't know next what's coming. You don't know what your next meal is coming from. Where your next when your lights, your patrol, bill, whatever. Amen. The children need feast and you've got nothing in the bed. Amen. Praise God. You have used all your last resources. Like that woman there with the blood issue. Amen. Like that Mexican woman, the bed take baby. We think about it and we enjoy it. Let's come to that kind of a condition where you say, now I take God at his word. I believe it anyhow. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know how it's going to happen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, God enjoys to do his children that way. All the time. It's universal rule with God. He always wants to do it that way. Amen. Oh, brother. Sure. Amen. And that's where you find so many times, brother, you know what is inside a person comes out. Sometimes the unbelief really shows. When you are an unbeliever, you really will be given room to really start saying whatever is inside of you. Amen. But when you're also a believer, that's when things also that you do not know exist in you, they come also out. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes. I know, brother, this is where God is leading his church to. Mm -hmm. To those kind of Red Sea experiences. Sure. The things that you are fearing, mm -hmm. the bondage you have just come away from, mm -hmm. is following you. It's what of your pursuit. You can feel the breath on your neck. Sure. Amen. You can't go on the side. You can't go ahead because of the Red Sea. Then you watch the leadership. Then that's when you must say, the Lord is my shepherd. Now the Lord shepherd me. When I've come to that kind of particular place. Hey, man. Praise the Lord. May the Lord shepherd you this morning. Whatever level that you are in, many times you, you know, we, we are trying at different levels. Pastor is not pastoral levels. Housewife, their own levels. School child, your own levels. Wife, your own levels. Everyone, you must carry your own cross. Nobody cares for another one. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen and amen and amen. So God is shepherding us. This 2023. We have come to a place, brother, where you can see the big names are falling apart. Amen. The big names. All the reputation. Amen. All things are just. We begin to see, brother, that uh, we are nothing. <laughs> Pastor, for me. If I've ever doubted that I'm ever a good pastor, it is now. Mm. I begin to see, oh my, 
I've made more mistakes than good. Mm. Now I, I, I need the Lord to Amen. help me. Yes. There are things we've presumed before. Amen. There are things that we've said before. Big statements and so forth. Brother, when you hear such statements, you know, pastor scandalizing another pastor, preaching things that they ought not to speak against all around. You know, brother, you just say they know nothing. Amen. Let me tell you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Jesus was led of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He was led of God. And the prophet says in the church in this condition, the greatest thing that ever happened was when the Spirit of God came upon Jesus. Amen. 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 The Spirit of God came upon Jesus. And a man became God. Hallelujah. This, this is sublime, brother says. A man becoming God. And you know what? It does not end with Jesus only. That is possible with you too. Amen. What Jesus did, yes. you know, was making a way so that the bride of these last days can also become God. Amen. Brother, the story does not end with Jesus. Amen. Whatever happened in the Old Testament, it came to Jesus to fulfill. But now, Jesus has enabled that the bride may also finish, complete. Praise God. Amen. God coming into flesh. Yes, sir. Brother, that's the only way you are delivered. Yeah. When you can be yes. yielding yourself and let God lead you. Amen. Let God Amen. speak through you. Yes. Let the bride now speak and stop crying Amen. and say, God, do in me like you did in Amen. God made a man in his image. You are in that image of God, brother. And what is going to happen and going to cause you to realize it is when God is shepherding you. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. How many can say this morning, oh, I just want to give up all my ideas. The Lord, please shepherd me. I've got situations and I've got problems. This morning, I want you to know if you can get a hold of this issue, brother, sister. You will walk out of that door with all those problems behind you. We can do it, brother, sister. Every time we go to brother Branham's meetings, every time he had you you hear him say, now you, you, you can believe it now. Yeah, don't think what I'm thinking. Come on, throw down. Doubt your doubts. Yes. Brother will say, doubt your doubts. Yes. You, know, you can come out here now with that crippling condition out of you. That blood condition out of you. Yes. And he says, yeah, that, I can see that woman. Is, she's believing. Oh, yes, yeah, she's, she's getting it. And there she goes. And the whole church, you know, just erupts, brother, in praise and worship. Not one day. Every service. Why can't we do it now, brothers? I believe that's what we must now come to. Yes. I believe that's what this message has been trying to condition the people. That we can now say it's no longer I that live. This is no longer my words. It's no longer my feelings. God, help me to our faith. Everything I've ever known or done, brother. But let me be led. Brother, I will tell you that it takes a lot of humility. It takes a lot of humility. The prophet says, when that dove, the Holy Spirit of God, came down on Jesus, it was complementary. The nature of that dove coming on the nature of that land. He says, that land has to be meek like that dove. Yeah. Amen. And he says, that's how the Holy Spirit can come on us. Oh, yeah. But many times, he says when the Holy Spirit wants to come upon us, yeah. many times he finds such a nature yeah. that we are jackals, we are wolves, yeah. we are tigers, we are all sorts of things, we are we are grueling. Yeah. Hey. There's a lot of grueling in the homes. Yeah, sure. There's a lot of complaint. Yeah. Until, brother, but the nature of the Holy Spirit cannot come upon us at all. Yeah, right. And when the Holy Spirit cannot come upon us, my brother, my sister, then you can never do whatever you think you can do. Amen. It's only God that does it. It's God, brother, that Amen. pushes the water out of the way. Amen. It is God that performs the supernatural. Amen. It is God in you. It was God in Christ. Amen. Without God being yes. in us and allowing God to come upon us, my brother, we are just a religionist. We are just another denomination with the pill of fire and pictures of the prophet around us. We must come to a place and say, God, take away this nature. Let that doubt come upon me, God. He says the church must get to that condition. When we 
come to that condition, my brother, my sister. There will be supernatural events and things taking place here. Praise the Lord. All the supernatural will be taking place right here. The prophet almost says in that message, you wonder why there's no revival. You wonder why the people are sleeping. You wonder why the people are not revived. Why? Because we are walking down in God. May God condition us. May God lead us to that place of humility where we say, God, do to us according to thy way. Forgive all my talking out of ten. Back by me. God, help me support me. Condition us, brothers. Amen. God help us, brother. We see the time is last spent, but we are not in condition. Amen. May God undertake for us. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. It's an influence. Let me just let me just read you a, a vision that the prophet had. Um, the vision of Jesus Christ. He said. He said, how the angel came to him. Uh, that is in 55 or 117. Uh, right. He says, uh, my mother had already been saved and I had baptized her. Then I thought, oh my, my father is the one that remains now, but he drinks. And I thought, if I could just get him to accept the Lord Jesus, and I went out, laid down on a little old pallet out in the front room near the door. And somebody said to me, rise up. And I raised up, went walking and went back into the field behind me. An old room surge field. And there, he says, standing not over ten feet from me, in the air stood a man, white garment on, a little fellow. He said he had his arms folded like this a beard, kind of short, hair down to his shoulders. He was looking sideways from me, like that. A peaceful looking figure. But I could understand it, how his feet were hanging in the air, just like standing in a pose. And you know, even his clothes, they were blowing with the wind, like clothes on a wash line. Hey. Look at this thing. I want you. This is the one thing, brother, that I, I really felt must lead us. Amen. He says, I thought, now, wait a minute. I beat myself. I said, now I'm not asleep. And I pulled down, pulled a little piece of that sage stick, you know, like a toothpick, put it in my mouth, you know. I looked towards the house. I said, no, man. I wasn't there praying for my dad. Something said to me, I should come out here. And now he has sent this man in the air. And I thought, that looks, yeah, that paragraph, paragraph 42, that looks like the Lord Jesus. I thought, I wonder if it is. He was looking just exactly directly towards where our house sits now. So I moved around this way to see if I could see him. And I could see the side of his face like that. But he, I had to turn away around this way to see him. And I said, mm, he never moved him. And I thought, I believe I will call him. And I said, Jesus. And when he did, he looked down like that. That was all I remember. He just reached out his arms. And the prophet said, he passed out. Friends. You see, this is, this is what is leading us. This is what the kind of influence that has brought this message. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what? Amen. This, this vision, these experiences of the prophet. Mm -hmm. This is what has brought this message. Mm -hmm. This is what has been shepherding this man. Mm -hmm. The influence of such things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And he said, he just reached out his arms. He said, there is not an artist in the world who could paint his picture. The characters of his face. He said, the best I've ever seen, that movement's head of Christ at 33. I've got it on all literature and everything I use. He said, that, because that looks just like it. Mm. And, uh, and so then, oh, pretty near as close as it could be. Mm. Amen. He says, he looked like a man. If he 
begin to speak, the world will come to an end. Amen. Look at the power, brothers. A man with such a power that if he would speak, the world will come to an end. Our brothers. Amen. Let him speak all the demons out of our life. Let him speak all the evil that around us. This is such a power. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Such a power that if he would speak, the world would come to an end. And yet with so much love and kindness till you are just pitched over. Brother and sister, this was Jesus. Amen. And the vision the prophet saw. And this is what brought all those messages that we are for. Amen. You see, and sometimes the prophet is not jumping up and down, you know, and being religious and emotional. But this is what was shepherding him. Amen. And he was trying to impress upon the church that, friends, no matter how much religious you are, whatever, be led by this kind of influence. Amen. Welcome this kind of presence. Amen. Welcome this kind of attitude. Yes, around sir. You will have that kind of power, brother. Amen. You will speak and the world will stop. You will speak and things will change around you. You think that husband is really giving you a trouble. But you can change it. Yes, sir. Amen. If you have this kind of influence. Amen. All of us, brothers and sisters, we have no reason to complain. Yes, Sickness, doubt, whatever. We can change those things Amen. if we allow Jesus Christ to come and influence yes, us. Amen. No wonder, brother, he walked on the water. Yes, no wonder he could speak and things will happen. No wonder the devil who scream and say, we know who you are. Yes. The son of God. Amen. People came to arrest him. Amen. And uh, even his enemies went back with shaking their heads and they say that. Sure. No man spoke like that. Yes. Brother, even in silence, yes. Jesus condemned his, his enemies. Amen. The song says, even Pilate shook before Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. May God help us, brothers. Yes. This is the kind of shepherding we are looking for. Yeah. The kind of influence. Not too much knowledge. Not how long I've been in the message. But this kind of influence. That we should feel it and know that it's near us. And that we should allow it to govern our lives. The way we talk to each other. The way we talk to our husbands. The way we talk to our wives. Praise God. Amen. No wonder he dissolved the tumors. Brother, we, 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 we hear things in this message. We so much want it and we wonder, how can we get it? We are battling to find it. But let the Lord be your shepherd. Amen. Let us be shepherded by this kind of spirit. He says many times the dove wants to come upon us, but he finds that we, we are untourable. We are such a nature that dove cannot abide upon. Amen. May God help us, man. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to. But you see, we, 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 we just want to be shepherded, brothers. Yes. We want the thing that makes the clock tick, the thing that makes things happen. Amen. May we look in the right direction. Amen. Oh, brother, may we pray for it and say, God, this is the kind of Christian that I want to always to be. Help me, God. Even right here in the pulpit, I, I, I have so much now seen. There was something about Brother Branham. Yes. Amen. You can see there was something leading that way. Yes. Something leading Jesus was leading Brother Branham, was leading Moses. Yes. You can see Israel was being led by this very same vision of God.
pajama shirt soaking wet with the tears. When I come to myself, walking back through the broom sedges, feel walking back home. You see, we want things changed, brothers. You guy, Jackson, we want things changed, brother. This is the man who changes things. This is the man that completely influences you until your bitterest enemy, amen, will become your friend. Brother, this is what the message is all about. That's what Brother Branham spoke about, and that's what he, he, he completely was completely teaching every day and thinking and that we should get it. But I'm sure we'll get it. Amen. We are going there, brothers yes. and sisters. I believe we are going to get it. Get there, we will, as long as we are just met. You will get it. Amen. Amen. No man can shape up another, no man can change another. But it takes God to come down, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes don't argue with the person, brother. Pray for the person. Pray that this same one who will speak and the world will come to an end. Sometimes it's not your boss, it's demon power. It's not your husband, it's demon power. It's not your brother, it's not your sister, it's devils. But how did he cast out devil? This same spirit of Jesus. Amen. 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 May God help us, my brother, my sister. Amen. 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 As I was with Moses, Brother Branham says, as I was with Moses, we believe as God was with Brother Branham, he is now going to be with the bride. He is now here with us. This is the age when we are now crossing the Jordan, my brother, my sister. This is when we are now taking over. There is no more Branham now. There is no more Moses. But you are the person now that's taking place of Moses. You are taking the place, amen, of Branham. You are taking that place now, brother, of all the apostles. Amen. amen. You are the power now that's shaking this hour. Amen. Oh, may God help us, brother, sister. Amen. amen. Be shepherded. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. The Bible says, I shall not want when I am shepherded. Yes. In other words, you shall not run in empty. You yes. shall not lack that money. Yes. You shall not lack that job. When the Lord is shepherding you, brothers and sisters, you will have all things at your disposal. Amen. You shall not want, amen. In other words, you shall not go hungry. Amen. I says, I've been a, 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 a young man, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. God will never forsake you. Amen. He will not forsake you. You will not want when God is leading you, brothers and sisters. When he is guiding us, my brother, he will supply that health. You will not want all that money. You will not want that. Yes, but, but what we are praying for, you will not want. You will get it, brother. Yes, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Brother says, God wants to do for you more than you want to do yourself. Amen. God wants to do for you that thing that you are praying for. Yes. He wants to give you the Holy Ghost. He wants to give you, brother, that car, that job, that money, whatever, that parent. Get it, my brother. You shall not want this year. This year of 2023, the Lord is going to be shepherd right here in Boston. The Lord is going to be guiding somebody. The Lord is going to let somebody see this vision. Somebody is going to catch it. Somebody is going to know. That is going to throw aside everything that besets your brother. God is going to shepherd this church. Even the pastor is going to be shepherded and preaching. You are going to see it's no longer a man. The Lord is shepherding you. You shall never fail in your health. You shall never fail in your death and whatever you want to be meant. That job, that car, whatever that you are looking for. The wealth is the Lord's brother. You know that if you want a favor, if you want somebody who is in influence, be friendly to them. But now if you are friendly with God, God loves the whole world. The beast on every mountainside, the fish is on the sea. When we are being led, yes. shall we not rather be led, brother? Be led, Amen. be shepherded. Amen. Put the Lord as your shepherd. Amen. You know what? The children of Israel being shepherded, not by Moses. Moses was also just a man. Yes. That's why when he came around to the, 
to the brook there, to that place where the rock where there was no water. Moses cried. Yeah. You are going to come to a place where even the pastor is crying. Yes. Where even the preacher is crying. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But God said, stop crying. Yeah. Speak. Yeah. Speak the word. Preach the word. Yeah. This word, brother, is putting you in a position to speak. Yeah. It's in all your problems. How do your problems end? By speaking. The revelation that is being preached here. Yes. Do you know how you're going to get all the places you're going to? By listening to the man of God preaching the gospel. He's going to be the voice of God speaking whenever you take a hold of it. I always say in my church in Japan, we don't build houses by money. We don't buy, buy cars by money. We don't, we don't do anything we want to do by money. We do it by faith. Amen. You know, when you believe the gospel being preached here, yeah, you will get it, my brother, my sister. Like God spoke the world into existence. Amen. Hallelujah. Believed it and you waited. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Believe it and wait and it will happen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 He says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. God leadeth me in still waters. He makes me to lie down right there in the very feet. Amen. He, he makes you to lie down. Where all the jobs and everything are being offered, brother. He makes you to just come there and say, We are waiting for you. The job will hunt you. Amen. The blessings will hunt you. For you because God makes everything at your disposal, brothers. The beauty of being shepherded. Hallelujah. The sheep, they are led of God. Praise God. He restored my soul. This is the message of restoration. Many things have gone wrong, brother, but God is restoring his children back to the position, back to Adam, back to Eve, back to, 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 to Eden. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Reverend, so this is the message of restoration. Amen. Everything that you ever wear is going to be restored. The true message is being restored. The pure message is being restored. The gospel is being restored. When it restores you, it restores you back to your original place. Amen. When you're a son of God. Amen. amen. Oh, may God help us, brothers and sisters. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, the footsteps of the righteous, they are led of God. Do you know you cannot do that? Yeah. Unless God makes you do it. There's a man called Abimelech. One day he captivated the Sarah, taken. Amen. Abraham had sold his wife. Oh man. There's only one man who sold his wife. <laughs> Accepted Lobola for his wife. Wow. He got some shit, he got some oxen, he got some money, he got some gold. From the lover of his wife, Amen. Abraham. He wanted to save his own skin. Brother, <laughs> such cowardice. If you want to sell your wife, you get money. But he did. Praise the Lord. Amen. But it was now God who came to defend self. It was not Abraham. Abraham had just kind of given it up. But brother, God is still in that business. Amen. Amen. He knocked at Abimelech's heart. Abimelech says, Lord, but I, I'm a righteous man. You know, I'm innocent. I didn't, I didn't lie about this woman. Yes. And God says, yes. That's why I'm keeping you from sinning against me. Amen. Do you know, bro? It's not you that keeps yourself. It's God keeps you. Yes, sir. Amen. If you find yourself doing right, it's God is guiding you. Yes, it's God not allowing you to do wrong. Because you are predestinated. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Like one day the ark of Israel had been taken away by the Philistines. Yes. They had given it up, they basically everything had gone away from them, brother. But God went after that ark. Amen. Amen. That's why I want you to, to know, brother sister. We are coming to a place now where God fights for you. Yes. Amen. God fights your battles. Amen. That's what we believe. Identify yourself with this message. And then your battles are not yours anymore. Amen. God will fight for you this year of 2023. The Lord is going to shepherd you out of all those treacherous moments. When you are not about ready to give up, God will say, no, you are not giving up, my brothers. 
Because this is predestination. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. When Shadrach, Michigan, and Abednego went through, you know, the fire furnaces, Daniel went into the, into the lion's den, all those places. Sometimes children of God, you are allowed and you wonder, why does God allow these things? Because you are going to glorify God in those circumstances. Yes. Praise the Lord. We now know who Daniel was because he went into the lion's den. We now know who shut the music and the bed away because they were allowed into the fire and finish. You have got to overcome, my brother. You overcome something. God will allow some of those situations on you, brother, but God is going to shepherd you out of that fire and Praise the Lord. Amen. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Oh, if there's something that is so wonderful, is to see somebody who hates you and you are getting blessed yes. as they watch you. Yes. We read about the Beninas, amen, and the Rachels and all those things, brother. Amen. Before your enemies and God blesses you. Those people who don't like to see you prospering, but God will prosper you. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't fight nobody, brother or sister. The battle is the Lord. Amen. He will prepare a temple before you and you are feasting while your enemies are watching you. Amen. Amen. Your enemy that really has tried to bewitch you through all sorts of enchantments against you, but they see those things are not working at all. They don't work, brother, sister. Because there's no enchantment against Israel. There is nothing any enemy can put in your way. Hallelujah. As long as God is shepherding you, my brother, my sister. Don't worry about witches. Don't worry about the Sangomans. Don't worry about those who have killed the body. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is the heritage of the people of God. Many times, brother, many times the children of God, in the workplaces, wherever you are, you find that people just cannot help but hate being a Christian. Amen. Amen. Sometimes just let it because you don't put on the pants, you don't put on the trousers and so forth and they and they see you putting on skates on and they think you know you want to make yourself a holy roller or something a holier than we and so forth sometimes that's enough to be hated for praise the lord amen but this is how god now blesses you and anoints you and prepares a table before you in the face of your enemies and he says my cup runs over surely Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, this message, the Lord is my shepherd, in Jewish, it says, the Jehovah is Ra. Mm -hmm. Jehovah is my Ra. Mm -hmm. Jehovah is my guide. Yes. Jehovah is my leader. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. And the prophet says, you know, there are so many other names that describes God. They say seven redemptive names that belong to God. Amen. He says this one is only one of them. But the Lord will shepherd me. Hey, there is many other names that God will lead and guide you. You know, praise the Lord. Let me just go to um, uh, 55 or 120. The seven compound names of Jehovah. Praise the Amen. Lord. Now he says, you see, I've written down here uh, seven compound names of Jehovah. In other words, it is what God is. What God's attitude is made up in these seven redemptive names of him. And if the Lord can just guide you with Jehovah is my guide, Jehovah is my shepherd, how much more all these other six other names? Amen. I am that I am. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. He says, this is God's attitude towards the people from Eden. God's attitude. His attitude is to heal you. His attitude is to shepherd you, brothers. Amen. Amen. Back to Eden. He says, he's wrapped in these seven redemptive names. Amen. The first one being Jehovah Jireh. He says, which means the Lord will provide a sacrifice. Yes. 
Oh, my brother, my sister. We are talking and expecting of this third pool, the paradox. Mm. This is all to do with God going to be providing. Yeah. Jehovah, Jair. Whatever you need of this morning. From the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 22. Amen. Amen. The prophet says, Abraham was looking for a sacrifice. He was looking for something to sacrifice. His son actually asked him, Father, I, I can see the fire, I can see all this provision, but where is the lamp? Amen. Amen. Mm. Where is the lamp? And Abraham prophesied. The prophet said, Sometimes you speak things instinctively, without knowing why, without knowing what you are saying. Sometimes your children will ask you, where are we going to get the land? Where are we going? The master, this, this fees and so forth. God will provide himself. Amen. Just bless it out, brother. Sometimes just prophesy, just speak it. God is going to give us. Amen. Sorry, where is it coming from? I don't know. But God is going to give us, brother. Sometimes we're going to live in that prophetic sort of attitude. Amen. 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 Many times your children, they don't know you have no money. They don't know that you are sometimes, you know, headaches and things in the bedroom there. They don't know. All they know is that you will have it when I want it. Yes, sir. He says, the prophet says, we must be like that also, yes, brother and sister. God will provide it when you have need of it. God will provide your healing when you have need of it. He is ready to give you. He's Jehovah is Jireh. In the Old Testament, he was Jehovah Jireh. In Jesus Christ, he was Jehovah Jireh. Right now also, he is still Jehovah who will provide you. Oh, let's believe it. This morning, my brother and sister, this is what will take us out of these situations. God will provide the health. God will provide the joy. God will provide the money. God will provide the fuel. You were wondering, Brother Washington, where are those hires going to come from? God will provide yes. from the church. But now he'll give you from the church if all else will not give you. Amen. God will provide, brother, sister. Amen. He is still Jehovah Jireh. Yes. Abraham just spoke it out, brother. And Abraham was saying, where, where, we, 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 Isaac was saying, where are we going to get it? But brother, God pointed to Abraham something that he did not see. Amen. At the time, you will see it. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the prophet says, that Jehovah is the sacrifice. God will make himself the sacrifice. He will become himself the Messiah. The prophet says, that statement means God was going to become himself the sacrifice. God is going to become himself. Whatever you have need of this one, God will provide. That's why Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. When there is no more way, he is the way for you. Amen. He will provide the way for you. He is the way, brother, sister, Amen. through the wilderness. He is still doing great things for us. Eh? Let's believe in my brother, my sister. Let's never talk negative or think negative. Let's believe Jehovah is Jehovah Jireh. Amen. 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 And it says in the second is Jehovah Rapha. And in our shona language, Rapha, Rapha, meaning Rapha means the healing. Mm -hmm. Jehovah is the Rapha. He is the healer. Yes. Amen. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Jehovah is my healer. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then he is Jehovah Nisi, mm -hmm. which is my banner, my standard. Amen. Then Jehovah Shalom, which is my peace. There is no peace anywhere else in this world nowadays, brother. The only peace now is in this message. Amen. Jehovah is your peace. Amen. Amen. And then Jehovah Shama, meaning Jehovah is present. Yes. You believe Jehovah is right here, right now, brother, sister. Yes, God is the present help in the times of trouble. He is right here in this church. He says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. Jehovah is Shama. Jehovah is present. It is all an attitude of God. Whether you doubt it or not, Jehovah is right here, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes, we're going to read this scripture, Psalm 46. We haven't got the time to read about it. And Jehovah, typically, Jehovah, our righteousness. We have no righteousness, brothers and sisters. God is our righteousness. He gives us the righteousness. We have no righteousness of our own. 
Praise the Lord. And then Jehovah Ra. Mm. This is the one we are talking about. Jehovah is my shepherd. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me just see if I can get another quotation just before I get to the time of closing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Brother, I'm saying what God was in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ became in the New Testament. The God of the Old Testament became the Jesus Christ of the New Testament. Whatever God did, Jesus did. And now you also can do it. Praise God. Do you believe that you can do it now, brother? We remember God is always in three, brother and sister. He is the Holy Ghost right in the Old Testament. He was the Father of the dispensation. Then in the time of Jesus Christ, he was the Son. Amen. The Sonship doing things that the Father cannot do. But now the same God is working in the bride as the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the most difficult portion, brother. For another human being to believe, another human being, you, when the Holy Spirit is working through you, for another brother to believe that that's the Holy Spirit working in you, he says that's the most treacherous time. Amen. But we must believe each other, brother. That's why we must have that love work for each other. Amen. Amen. We must believe that the sister is my sister, the brother is my brother, he's a man of God, so that he can do you good. Amen. The brother now can pray for you. The brother can speak things to you. Amen. Amen. Right now, brother, all the ministry is now working in the bride. But you know what? Sometimes it works to people that you don't like. Sure. That's why we must just remove all hatred. Where brothers do you good now, you must accept that brother. You must love them as you love the Lord Jesus. Yes. Accept them as you love the, the, your pastor. Yes. And that's why the prophet says, you must reverence your pastor. Yes. Accept your pastor. Know that he can pray for you. Yes. He can do everything for you. Tell him all the things that you are going through. Just tell your pastor about it. Yes. He may even forget to pray for you, but as long as you have prayed, taught him, spoken to him, things will happen, brothers and sisters. There's a pastor in the who says, sometimes I, I get phone in text, please, pastor, pray for me. And sometimes I forget. But the next text comes, pastor, thank you for praying for me. I'm now well. Everything has happened. Everything has worked out. Yet I forgot to pray. You know why? Because you have just told the office. And when you have got the confidence to tell the office, but not the respect. you. He may forget also to pray. But as long as you have told the office, yes, God will take care of it, brothers and sisters. Things will happen. The Lord will shepherd you himself. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, that's why many times we must have confidence in our pastors. But sometimes we begin to see so many mistakes and then, oh my, we don't, oh my. Then they can't do you any good, the prophet says. Praise the Lord. But it will work out right. Don't worry. Amen. The good shepherd of the flock. I'm just going to read this and then I'll close here. And paragraph. Uh, uh, message called the good shepherd of the sheep. 570308. Praise the Lord. He says, sheep are very funny little creatures. Why did God always like, you know, his people, prophets and things like, to, to shape us? He says, because they are humble people. The very first message that came to announce the birth of Jesus Christ was to shepherds. Amen. Amen. The prophet says, because shepherds are humble. They are simple people. Amen. Amen. They are simple. And he says, that's how we must become simple and humble for this message of the Messiah. Now the message of the Messiah is the most important message because it's coming now, brothers and sisters. Yes. If you see the first coming, it was shepherds, announced to shepherds. The very first people who knew that Messiah was here, it was shepherds. And the prophet says, that's why all the prophets were shepherds. Every prophet, every apostle, they were humble people, brothers and sisters. Every revival. You go to Azusa Street in America, it was black people, one-eyed black men, and all those things. It was in humble places, in Luther, 
in, in, in Germany. It was in a humble place. And it, it takes humility, brothers, yes, to be led of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 If we can just come to that place where you say, Lord, humble all of you. It is to be shepherd. Amen. And the sheep says, the sheep also, they stand together when the heat stands together. When the heat comes, when the trials are real hard, the heat is on. Everything going on everywhere. If all God's little sheep would just stand together, we would have the coolness of the shade of each other, the comfort to lean upon each other. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He says, now somebody says, is that necessary, brother, brother? It certainly is. There is nothing like having a real good, dependable friend. That when the troubles are blazing, the heat is on. You can go to this friend and sit down. Just explain it to them. Talk it over in personal confidence. And then kneel down and pray together. And know that this person is a good, god saved man or woman that you can put confidence in. Oh, it's good to do that. Brother, in this kind of times, we are needing each other. Brothers. We are needing each other. It says, come, let us reason together, says the scripture. Or, come, let us stand together. Amen. 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 It says, in heat, the ships stand together. In coldness, they stand also together. It says, and I think when the church gets real cold and indifferent, God's ship ought to kind of huddle up together, pray for each other. And the warmth of real good Christian fellowship. Oh, it means so much. Amen. Amen. That's why James spoke in the first psalm, saying, Blessed is the man that sitteth not in the seat of the scornful, stands in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, and his leaves shall not wither. You will not wither, my brother, my sister. Never mind how people are fixed, like left, right, and center. You will not wither. Praise the Lord, because you are now established in the midst of the waters. Yes, Let the revival be in here, brother. This is the time you know, when uh, the foolish virgins and the wise virgins. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Foolish and wise virgins. Yeah. This is the time when people are now finding their lips are going dry. And they're saying, please give me some of your oil. He says, I haven't got any extra. I've just got enough now for myself. Yeah. Brother, sister, this is not enough for yourself to make it nowadays. Yeah. Because it's being withdrawn. That's why you need, brother, somebody that can stand with you like Chuck Michigan and Bethany. Yes, when the heat was on and they were persecuted and they were threatened with the death, they said, let's give us some time so that we can get my brother here, yeah, assemble this one together, that we can pray. Brother, you are needing now your prayers plus the prayers of others. Yes. Yeah. Remember, Peter was told, I have prayed for you, Peter. Amen. Your faith has failed, nearly failed, yes. but I have prayed for you. Yes. Amen. So that when you are convinced, stand with your brothers. Amen. Amen. Your faith will fail nowadays, brother, but God Amen. will make you stand. Yes. You will not wither. Your leaves will not wither. Amen. God will push you through. You just have enough strength to go on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's the same, the same also with a person. I just a person that is also within the storm. An old pastor, an old preacher who has gone through things. Amen. An old God said, saint that's weathered the storm. You can sit down and tell him your problems. Oh, yeah. brother, sister. We haven't got that kind of dependability among each other. But we are needing now, brother, much more love among ourselves than ever before. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me just finish this one. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. See, she, she's like, one time, why do I get sick? It may be for his glory. One time when we were passing a blind man, the disciples said, who sinned, this man or his parents? Jesus said, in this case, neither sinned, he or his parents, but that the works of God might be made manifest. Amen. Nowadays, brother, things are being allowed all the believers to manifest the works of God. 
There are situations, bro. Pastor, I'm going to manifest the words of God. Like that blind man. They want what, who has sinned right here. Who has done wrong? He did not do any wrong. But that the works of God might be manifested. Nowadays, God is being manifested when He has healed you, when He has done something for you. Amen. The works of God are going to be manifested through you. God proving His word through you, brother, sister. He's speaking on you some difficult situations. Those are to prove God and magnify God in your life. Sometimes you wonder why, but you are going to magnify God with your problems. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So little did he know, he was born blind. Through his youthful days, it might have been hard for him to understand, but after a while he finds out it was for the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why when we got sheep, if they have a shepherd, a man, an owner of the sheep, when he went to get a shepherd, he went and searched out till he got the best shepherd that could be begotten. Because he loved his sheep. And this man must be special trained, knowing how to take care of the sheep. He must know the kind of food they eat. You know, there's a lot of sheep food. And there's a lot of food you give your sheep will kill it. I'm so glad that God was mindful enough of his sheep to get the right kind of shepherd, the Lord Jesus. Amen. He knows what sheep food is. Amen. Amen. And you know what sheep food is? Brother says, it's the word of God. Amen. Men shall not live by bread alone. Amen. Oh, brother, sister. Amen. May I change that just a little bit and say, sheep shall not live by bread alone. Amen. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. The sheep of God are fed by the word of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit in you. What makes you the sheep feed solemnly on the word? Yes. And solemnly he feeds on the word. Brother, sister, this word is what God used to speak the world into existence. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why the prophet says you read the Bible every day. You don't know when you're going to need what you are reading. Sure. Read it anyhow. One day you'll find that word gets quickened. And that word will speak you out of that situation. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Holy Spirit in you. Amen. What makes you the sheep fit solemnly on the word? And anything you throw in the pen outside the word, he will root it out. Yes, Amen. But he will just take sheep food along. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. Shall we just stand up to our feet? message from other times, from other days, but sometimes it doesn't sometimes make the sense to you and you're not following the correct sequence of things. Amen. But the prophet says, God is now making us sheep. For example, when Jesus Christ was baptized by John, the Holy Ghost came down, amen, in the form of the dove and abide on Jesus Christ. The prophet says, in our churches, the same scenario of the baptism is repeating again. God wants those conditions to repeat again. The same situation has happened at the Jordan River. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon us, brothers and sisters. We are you. We are three. We are a trial beings. Yes. You know, we are three kind of individuals. You've got the outside. The prophet says, we are made like God. God was three. Amen. He was the Father, He was the Son, He was the Holy Ghost. We also have got the outside body. We have got the inside spirit. And we have got the soul. Brava. It's now the word in the soul. And that word will help you. Will resurrect you. Praise the Lord. Sometimes it's not so much what we know in the outside. But it's that word in the soul. It will get quickened. That's why we say read it every day, brothers. Pray. The prophet says, read, pray. Even if you don't feel like reading, you don't feel like praying, read and pray. You are just planting the seed right inside of you. One day, when you have now need to speak things, you are speaking.
you something that you have planted in your heart already. Praise the Lord. That word is a seed waiting to germinate for the right occasion. The right situation. Amen. Brother, sister, we are now coming to a place where there's going to be a shutdown. The word we've been hearing all along has been lying dormant, but it's coming to a place where it will speak and things are going to take place among us. Praise the Lord. Because God has made your soul in the image of God. You are a God. That flesh of God was Jesus Christ. The Father was the Father. But now the Holy Spirit is anointing our hearts, brother, to quicken the same way in this day. Amen. And God will be resurrected again in our hearts, in our flesh, and God will do things. Let's just close our eyes now. And say, Lord, make me the Holy Spirit in me. Make me humble. Make me a lamb. Brother Branham says, you remember and say, Father, Brother, I felt so good that night. Don't tell me I did not have the Holy Spirit. I felt so good. And the prophet says, yes. You were feeling like that because it was God. You were a lamb. But now you have become a, a wolf. The Holy Spirit wants to take back, make you a lamb again. Let the dove settle upon you. Us. It will lead you, brothers and sisters. Let us be led. Let's all become lambs. He says the Holy Spirit is not very far from you. He's just not far from where you are. He's just waiting for you to become a lamb again. He says when the church, they were really lambs, God led them. The Lord was our shepherd. That's why miraculous things took place. It will take place again, brothers and sisters. Remember, God wants to do something, the same thing that he did at Pentecost. There is going to be another church like that church at Pentecost in these last days. But God is hunting to put people into condition again that they were as lamps of God. And the gentle dove will come and lead us again, brothers and sisters. Is that your prayer? Just raise up your hand. God, make me a lamp. Let that dove of God settle upon me. Sometimes I'm not aware that I've got these natures that drives the dove away from me. Sometimes I don't know my way of talking, tongue, behavior sometimes, driving the dove away from me. Make me a lamp again. All the power comes when the dove comes back and looks in our heart again. Listen, the still small voice. My sheep hear my voice. And the voice of God is the word of God. Amen. The prophet says, if you know it, if you think you know it better than your pastor, brother, you are really becoming a wolf. Driving that spirit away from you. But the gentle dove will come back and there will be another Pentecostal revival. May God make us lambs again. Make me a lamb. The prophet says, shave me. Make me meek. Make me humble. Just raise up your hand. Make me more like you. Make me like you. To be like Jesus. Remember the vision of Christ. Amen. Jesus would not even need to talk sometimes. Brother, he was so with such a power inside of him. You would know. Like for example, when Pilate asked him, who are you? Are you the Messiah? He says, you, you already know that I'm the Messiah. You don't want to confess it because some reason is like it. But you know I'm the Messiah. You will discern inside of the heart of the Lord. Not even shouting, not, but rather with such a character, that like vision that we have read here. Let Christ come, make us land. There will be revival. 
the simple word problem says we are not we are coming to a place where you're not going to have any hands laid on you but that the spirit of god is just going to come into the church one day the love of god is just going to sweep into the church and the sick are going to be healed while peter yet spent the Holy Ghost came upon me. The sick will get healed. Just by the preaching of the word. The preaching of this word will heal, will deliver. Amen. Let's just pray. Merciful God. Many times it's so difficult to say. Many times it's so difficult to not to know things when we know. Not to be like grown-ups, not to be like know it alls But to deny ourselves and make your spirit to come. So that the gentle dove, like happened on the baptism of Jesus by John. Amen. That baptism, when the dove of God came and settled upon Jesus. And the prophet says, we must come back to that condition again. We must be led by that kind of spirit of gentle doves. Many times, God, we have discovered, we have become anything else. We have become wolves. Even in our homes, many times in our behavior, even our pastors sometimes, we have become like wolves. We have not led, allowed them gentle God to lead us but we want to pray the Lord be my shepherd we want to be led God when Jesus was led he walked on the water when Peter was walking on the water being led by the spirit we want to take you at your way God help us Lord there's so many things sometimes people hear in the church it makes them angry it makes them rebel it makes them have attitudes. For some time, God, people can even be driven away from fellowship, from church. But make us to be humble, God. That's not our diet. To be angry is not our diet. As the prophet says, the dove is not, there's got no guile. Just like the sheep, there's got no guile. It's not our diet, Lord. To dwell in those kind of atmospheres. Make us Lord like sheep. So that the gentle dove can lead us. Bless my precious brother for the Help us Lord. This inspiration 2023. May you lead us. Influence us. By the presence of the spirit. May the influence of the spirit in the church. Lead and guide us Lord. Help us dear God. Heal the sick in our midst. Get glory to yourself, O oh God. We commit everything. Everything that I've tried to say, maybe just bumbled up my message, running up and hurrying it over, Lord. I pray that we make sense to the hearts of your children. May we be sheep again. We remember Israel when they went into Egypt. They said, We must tell Pharaoh we are shepherds. And so that we can live in Goshen. Where in Goshen was light, all the plagues falling in Egypt did not fall in Goshen. All the plagues and the darkness and the problems, they didn't fall in Goshen. Because it was sheep country, shepherd country. People dwelling in Goshen. God, we believe you are making a difference between the Egyptian and the Israelite. Make a difference even in the homes of your children. May there be no plagues in their houses. Thank you, Jesus. May there be no darkness in their homes. Oh, because they are shepherds. Yes, yes. Where the light dwells. Yes. We will walk in the light, God. Yes. Make us walk in that light. Yes. Get us away from things that cause darkness. Speeches that cause darkness. Help us. We hear them everywhere. On the internet, on YouTube, God. We hear Things being said, God, we pray, shave us from those things. May we never 
who wants to have such listening ears to such wrong things. That takes the Holy Spirit away from us. Without the Spirit, God will help us. We can't do nothing. I commit this church and all the people here in your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.